Party. Sorry for this delay. Uh, today we have a pleasure to host Karol Holdecki from the University of Gdańsk. Uh, uh, Karol is a well-known expert in entanglement theory, foundations, uh, device independence. So it's a great pleasure to, to have him uh, uh, giving the talk today. And he'll be talking uh, about uh, limitations of device-dependent quantum key distribution. Uh, please, Carol, thanks again for agreeing to, to visit us. Thank you, Michal. Thank you for the invitation and for letting me opportunity to share with my results uh, that are obtained in collaboration with Matthias Christian from the uh, University of Copenhagen and, and Roberto Ferrara from Technische Universität München. Um, this is based on the R paper that's already in archive. Um, so first the outline, I will start with some motivation and background and uh, later define both device dependent and independent key because both definitions will be uh, needed. Then I pass to upper bounds on quantum device independent key. Uh, further show some example of states that exhibit the gap between the two keys and um, and display also the sufficient condition for a gap. And I will, in the second part of the talk, pass to the scenario for channels and also show some upper bounds, some limitations for quantum channels and conclude uh, with some open problems. Um, so regarding motivation, we kind of know that uh, the history was that uh, first there were the lower bounds, like what you can achieve in quantum cryptography and then people were interested in uh, how how tight are these lower bounds so they uh, they develop a lot of uh, upper bounds for device dependent key uh, both for states and channels and but for the device independent uh, key this topic was not studied thoroughly so the results that are on upper bounds on device independent key that was seen before our paper uh, the one is so I display here. Um, one is by Enid Kaur, Mark White, and Andreas Winter, already published. Uh, this is uh, uh, this shows the case with quantum adversary. And the other article with Mark Winczewski, Tamog Nadas, and myself uh, is considering non signaling adversary. And the recent paper by Ledic, Felix Ledicki and Rotem Arnon Friedman also. Uh, concerns quantum adversary and some limited distillation operations. So the goal is to provide upper bounds for quantum states rather than devices, but also we have upper bounds for devices and prove the gap between device dependent and independent key. Uh, so when I say that uh, the aim is to upper bound uh, the IK for quantum states, I mean that uh, I will Take supreme over all measurements, the, the best measurements that, that you can do, and the bounds should still hold. So this is the provider's perspective. So suppose I'm a producer of a device, of DI QQD device, and I, I can produce some state raw. Does there exist a measurement so that quantum device independent key, KDI, can be large? And in some cases, it is, uh, as we will see, it is the case that the answer is no. So um, First, device dependent key. The scenario is, I think, well known to everybody in this audience. Um, yeah, so, the two uh, distant parties, honest parties, Alice and Bob, share a quantum state, Roy B, the purification of which holds if. And uh, they also can measure these, these states to obtain statistics. And they, the, both the measurements and the dimension of the states are trusted. So, they know, for example, that they um, in each time they have a two qubit state in each run and, and they have particular uh, measurements, me observables to measure. And definition of device dependent key, uh, this is this small monster. So this is in film over the epsilon, which is the secrecy error. There should be lim supremo here instead of limit. Um, then supremo over quantum local operations and public communication of the ratio between and log dimension of the output is key over n. Well, we demand that uh, the, the operation delta, the, the protocol uh, working on input state, output something uh, epsilon close 
to ideal state and the ideal state output state is has takes form of a correlated uni, uniform randomness for Alice and Bob decorrelated from Eve so this product with the state rho e, rho e here mm. so regarding so, this uh, yes so, so can, can I ask because like I mean some of the people pr probably are very familiar with the setting but some maybe others a bit less do you might maybe like giving some intuitions as for like yeah well uh yeah sort of the can you try to demystify that with this formula if i can be a bit more specific mm, let me give a try so so i think this this ideal state is kind of clear right so that uh, the two parties wants to have uh, correlated beats that are uniform and the product with is dropper so we kind of i think agree that this is like ideal state and uh, this uh, the protocol um which is denoted here by delta acts on n copies of the same state rho and have some output which is delta of rho tensor n which should be a closing trace norm uh, to the ideal states and then we look how big is the part of ideal state that contains key so dimension of this part of ideal state that contains key is dn so we take take log to get beats. So log dn is number of beats that you get out of it. And then uh, um, because we this is like asymptotic definition, so we can work on n copies of that of state rho. We we are interested in the ratio of this log d dimension n log dn, which is number of beats um, uh, divided by number of input states that you uh, invest in in that. Uh, which is which is called the key rate so the, this key rate of product of the protocol is log dn over n um ideally would be that this is like if you have for example n singlets you would have n bits because you can just measure and get one key bit from one singlet state so for example then the the the, the ratio is one n per n which is one and just to give example which is ideal case you don't have to operate on that because singlet is uh, like uh, um, already decoupled from if and per gives you perfect correlations uh, so this is one thing and of course we want error uh, we want the protocol delta to be such uh, that uh, uh, we, we want to be able to have a family of protocols that have smaller and smaller uh, error so closer that give output that is closer and closer to ideal state which is which is denoted by this infimum over epsilon more than zero. This limb lim soup that should be here, limb soup actually tells that uh, it is enough that we have protocol that works for, for example, on n equal two to k. And we don't have to uh, have protocols working uh, for any n, but it's enough that we have this limit supremum so that we achieve uh, in, in limit of large number of n, we achieve the ratio log dn over n. So this is what I can tell more. I don't know if I was more descriptive or demystifying that, but uh, this is what and, I. Uh, uh, for, if for there me, are questions, please ask. Sorry. That was for me, that was brilliant. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so I hope the others share your opinion. Um, okay, so let us turn to upper bounds on device dependent key. And. Um, so first the upper bound is the regularized relative entropy of entanglement so denoted as er this is um infimum of of uh, over separable states of relative entropy rho from state sigma relative entropy distance which is defined by trace rho log rho minus trace rho log sigma and uh, and regularized version of this function is that uh, you take uh, as an argument n copies of rho so er of rho tensor n you divide it by n and take the limit and this quantity is an upper bound on the key which was shown in that paper uh, the other upper bound known is called squash entanglement um, the authors of this measure are andreas winter and matthias Christandl, and the upper bound was shown by matthias Christandl in his phd thesis so this is the infimum over eve's operation on the system e of a tripartite pure state, which is purification of state rho. So here is argument is rho, but then you take a purification of it 
and you let Eve to apply some channels, uh, quantum channels on, on the system E. And this quantity I, A, B, given lambda E, if you, if you turn it to letter A, B, C, which is simpler, then it means to, it, it's just conditional mutual information, which is the following uh, combination of um, uh, von Neumann entropy. So S, A, C plus S, B, C minus A, C, S, C minus S, A, B, C. Fine, so to summarize this, uh, the device dependent key, KDD of rho of a state, is no greater than the minimum of the two entanglement measures. So they are measures of entanglement. Okay, we will use them later um, in our approach. Uh, so this is why I showed you that before. And now let me turn to device independent key. This scenario is a bit different from device dependent one because the parties share the state, the honest parties and if, if shares purification. Uh, however, uh, the parties uh, and the parties have two devices that has buttons and uh, some outputs. And, and the honest parties, Alice and Bob, trust only statistics of inputs and outputs of the devices, yeah? to, to be short. Of course, there's this small, <laughs> small star. Uh, so actually, there is a tacit assumption that device is used only once because otherwise um, the device could leak the key in from one session during the, the second session. So once you use the devices, uh, feed the input and get the outputs, you should generate key and then trash devices. Um, so this is the scenario. Um, and, uh, and this device we denote as if it is quantum, uh, so I want to stress that the, 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 the honest parties do not trust the measurements MXA and MYB, and neither the dimension of the state, the state be even within dimensional, we don't know about it. So mathematically, we denote this, uh, this device by um, the pair of devices by M rho, where rho is a, a quantum state and M is, are the, is the family of measurements, MXA, MYB. And I call this honest implementation device. So when when provider is honest, he gives you this particular he gives you that measurement, and then he measures them on particular quantum state row. But of course, there are attacks, and because we aim in a device in upper bounds, it is enough that we consider the IID attack. So we do not consider general attack, but the attack that attacks each device separately. And here is another small monster, uh, which is the, the definition of IID device independent key of a device M rho. So this is very similar to the former definition, the previous one, but uh, there is this infimum here. So if it was not about, if, if it was not for this infimum, it would be like device dependent key. So again, we have this small epsilon error. We have limit supremum. Uh, we have supreme over protocols, which are called uh, protocols from a class, classical local operation public communication. I will tell about more about this class later. And, um, and there is infimum over attacking devices um, uh, that mimic the honest implementation device. So, so if provider is honest, it is MRO, but someone on the way from provider to you can switch the device to, to state sigma and measurements n. So the protocol does not act on m rho, but it acts on p, on n copies of n sigma device, so on this device. And it gives some key rate. Yeah? So k kappa and epsilon is the rate of distillable key uh, distilled by the protocol p from devices, device n sigma. Um, and by this closeness in epsilon, what I mean here that the, uh, the device N sigma mimics uh, operation of statistics of device M rho. So two kind of probability, conditional probability distributions, P and P prime, I say that they're epsilon close if uh, when I take a supreme over measurements X, Y, then the P minus, then the distance between two distributions, P, X, Y and P prime X, Y, is not greater than epsilon, okay? One can, of course, uh, vary here in that definition. One can uh, look not, not for closeness of devices, but uh, on, for example, Bell parameter, uh, like Bell value, value of Bell inequality or 
some other other parameter like uh, quantum deterioration rate. But actually, we consider this, and our upper bounds are independent of the choice of this closeness here. So, if there are no questions to, to this part, um, I can proceed to uh, have some comments. So, I told you that I will comment on uh, the classical local operations and public communication operations. So, this is class used by the protocols that process classical inputs and output of devices. Mm, uh, so device independent ones because the party simply has only classical data at hand they can press the buttons and uh, get classical outputs from devices this is and of course the public communication is because Eve is listening to them and uh, and they can uh, she can she can uh, record that and use it later so this is regarding that class I told you before about class quantum local operations and public communication this is used by device dependent protocols, but I would like to stress that if you compose the CLOPC class with the measurements N of a, of a device that attacks you, then you get actually quantum, particular quantum LOPC protocol. And we will use this relaxation so we can relax CLOPC to QLOPC by composing this with quantum measurements. We will use it later. And as I told you right before, there are other variants of definition of uh, device independent key that are based on different testing procedures. So, for example, people test uh, the, the, do not test, uh, do the tomography of device. So, how, how, what, what probability distribution um, represents my device, but they ask for two parameters. What is the bell, in, bell, bell violation of some bell inequality, and like CHSA, violation of CHSH inequality, and what is the quantum bit error rate? Like, what, how good correlations um, uh, people have uh, from, uh, from the outputs of device given some measurement. Uh, but our approach, our bounds are the same for these variants, so we can, you can vary over these definitions. So let's start with trivial bounds that are known. So device independent key is, of course, not greater than device independent IID key. So when, when the attack is uh, in has IID manner, so that each device is attacked separately which is in turn not greater than device dependent key because in that case the parties can perform all operations that they know dimension they know a lot so these inequalities are trivial and actually it is believed that in case of pure states if i didn't show them that it should be function of states or that so if the state under consideration is pure then it's believed that uh, the inequalities turn to equalities and the results for the CHSH bell inequality, they imply that, um, which are obtained here, um, uh, they imply that uh, one can believe that KDI is actually equal to KDI IID. So in case of uh, testing by CHSH inequality, um, if I, that these two quantities look to be equal up to some, some irrelevant terms. So our task is to go beyond this trivial bound between KDI and KDD and show the strict gap between the two. Um, so can I, can I yes. um, maybe one, one trivial question. So uh, why uh, you uh, say, why this uh, device dependent key uh, is larger than uh, IID device independent key. I mean, it's obvious for me that if you had IID device uh, dependent key, the, the, uh, then the inequality should hold, but uh, like... Uh, ah, so the fact that I can use here the... Uh, uh, okay, it's even that, more. Okay, it's even more. Yeah, this is even more, so yeah. Yeah, okay, uh, for sure. Actually, wait. Uh, yeah, if it was just IID, then it would be obvious that you, I just increased the yeah. class operations of Alice and Bob. But the fact that K, KDD IID is equal to KDD itself, which I didn't put here, um, uh, follows from the defin quantum definitive theorem. Simply by symmetries, you can permute the states, and your state is close to something which is uh, <laughs> almost tensor power, so you, you can consider IID. Uh, I mean, because like, uh, those those oceans are defined in this asymptotic limit when number of copies go. Yes, yes, yes. They're the, well, defined like that. So I think this is the the answer. Also, I'm just thinking uh, loudly whether I should say more about uh, 
because this is actually what I what I said before is about equivalence of collective attacks and and uh, um, and general attacks uh, in device dependent scenario. But uh, in case of he, here, I consider IID. So still, still, I have to use the fact that this is more. Yes. So so that's maybe the answer that that KDD is even more than KDD co under collective attacks uh, under under IID attacks. Sorry. So this is this is the yeah. If there are further questions, I can. Like, I, I have one. Feel free to answer. If you feel to interrupt, yes. Right, one, one maybe stupid one, like uh, in the because uh, you know I, I'm always like interested in applications of genuine POVMs as opposed to projective me measurements in this business. Uh, yes. Is it like are they used at all in this device independent keys or they they don't play a role those POVMs? Uh, um, POVMs. So at the moment, no. Regarding key, no. I would say no, because the, the the protocols that people use in practice now they are just doing some simple like some, some sort of Eckert's protocol. So so CHSH uh, measurements are just projective. But um, but uh, if you consider a private randomness distillation in device independent setting. So that you don't you don't aim at correlations between eyes and bob, but you aim at uh, just uniformness at one side. And then, as far as I know, um, I think Remick would be the the expert in that. Um, there are there are uh, such results that you have one singlet state and you use uh, POVM with very many outcomes, and you obtain more and more and more and more randomness out of the same singlet. So you slowly slowly uh, turn the singlet into product state. And in each time from the measurement, you get random, uh, randomness. And this is really like a PUVM. I mean, I mean, with, with gazillion of outcomes. So that, that many outcomes is, I mean, like, if you wish to, um, to obtain no randomness. So this is what I can say in that. I will I'll say in private randomness, yes. Sorry, I can ask. So, so this only, so it's only an advantage if your state is fixed, no? Because if you if you base your DI QK or DI randomness on some value inequality, then you can get every any kind of correlation from projective measurements, right? So if you're asking how much key or randomness I can get out from a specific state, then it's good to go to POVM sometimes. But I guess if you don't fix the state, then maybe this this is not the case. If you don't know your state, you mean, yeah. Sure. I mean, this is hard to control then, whether you do this or that. Actually, whether the device does this or the other for you. That's true. Although, I think you can demand some, some behavior of a device. So it's not that I fix singlet in the, what I said, but I just, I demand my outcomes to, to violate certain bell inequality and then perhaps I can get something from QVMs. Okay, we can, I don't know. This is a side, side becomes a side topic discussion. Totally a side topic. Yes. Yeah, Carol, can I can I just have a very quick question? So, can you comment on this note that you said here that uh, this belief that in the case of pure states these things are uh, the same? Oh well, I think uh, so. So this is because of rigidity, right? So so but some bell inequalities are rigid, so that you, they self-test like n copies of a singlet state. So if you have such a if you have such a test that roughly speaking tells you that um, uh, that, that simply your, your state underlying is like in like a n singlet state but twisted a little bit locally with some junk uh, then then you have that much of kti as uh, as from n copies of iid singlet yeah so so then um, and and the same amount and actually it's equal to distillable entanglement of, of underlying state so so the KDD is then equal to KDI, but of course one would need to uh, look at this closer. So um, usually this uh, rigidity is up to uh, root, even self-testing is up to root of epsilon. So, uh, so for example, you cannot pass from self-testing to what I said before to the full rigidity because then this root of epsilon, root of root of root of root, goes past <laughs> it one. So, so you know there are some technical problems. Behind that, but I would believe that these are they are just technical. Okay, but but the KDD for pure states is known. You're saying 
Yeah, KDD for pure state is entropy of a von Neumann uh, of of sub von Neumann entropy of subsystem. Mm, okay. If you have just uh, like a, some pure state that you at hand that you, that you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So I, I feel like then maybe what you need is that. Uh, Mata, I I can hardly hear you. Sorry if you. Sorry. Uh, I try to fix. Is it better now? A little bit. Yes. No. <laughs> Um, maybe I just try to speak louder. So maybe what you need for the DI then is for every pure state to find some correlations that will be extremal in the quantum set of correlations. I guess then you can you can most likely reproduce the same rate in the DI way. Yeah, and that is true. If uh, yeah, if they are on. If you can uh, test by your bell inequality that you're on the boundary of the set of states, then it is like a sort of not vector vertex, but kind of like a point that cannot be split. Yeah, so yes, I agree. Okay, so uh, mm, let me pass to the second part. So I, I need to guide you one, just one uh, slide about uh, a state having positive partial transposition um, because we will, our findings will concern these states. So my notation is that rho gamma is partial transpose state rho. And, and there are states that, uh, we know that there are states that are uh, having positive partial transposition are entangled. Uh, there are some entangled states with positive partial transposition that satisfy first uh, they some of them satisfy that they have positive device dependent key and uh, which is like I say row one and so there are some states say row two uh, which are non-local in, in the sense that they violate some inequality and they're also TPT um, so yeah this was the breakthrough by Thomas Vertesh and Nicola Brunner uh, I say row one and row two because I mean that it is not known whether there exists a single state that satisfies these two properties at, at, at once, at the same time. However, from this you can infer that the candidates for KDI of rho uh, more, to be more than zero among PPT states is not excluded. It's still possible that there exists such states, so we let ourselves consider these, uh, these states in the further uh, research. And we will use also a, a well-known property of partial transposition that when, if you have two uh, Hermitian operators x, x, y, and y, then the trace of x, y is equal to trace x partial transpose, y partial transpose. Okay, so the main result then is that we can upper bound this uh, KDI, um, the device independent key of device M rho, where I take supremum of the measurements, uh, as by a function which takes supreme over measurement and infimum over the attacking devices uh, A and sigma that mimic my device M rho of the device dependent key of sigma. So uh, you see, I, I take device dependent key, but not of rho, but on of the attacking state uh, that is uh, that if has chosen. Um, and the corollary that we can derive from that is that for any row satisfying um, row partial transposed uh, uh, greater than zero, there is that this um, supreme over device independent key of M row is not greater than uh, device dependent key of row partial transposed. Um, and, uh, and in turn, this is upper bounded by the relative entropy of entanglement of row partially transposed and squash entanglement of row partially transposed. So we can use this measure to upper bound the device in the key and by switching from row to row partially transposed. And the proof of this corollary is simple. This is just by observation, by the property of partial transposition that I told you before, the device M partially transposed, row partially transposed, exactly is equal to M row. So we can choose, so if can choose as an attack, uh, sigma to be equal to rho partial transposed and uh, uh, at measurements to be partial transposed. Measurements because they are product, uh, this is still valid measurement, yes? And partial transposed is a valid measurement. 
Mm, and what is important, the above bound is independent from the measurements M. So somehow uh, you see this right hand side here is independent of M. Yeah, so whatever bad inequality you can think of with gazillion number of outcomes and uh, inputs uh, uh, and the measurement, quantum measurement M that you could um, measure on raw, you cannot beat this bound somehow. Yeah. So, so the proof of the main result is the following. Uh, I will give you this, this actually short proof. Um, so I recall the definition, a little bit re rewritten definition of device dependent key of a state sigma. So there is this decoration by Infimum and Nimsup of the key rate and the key rate is achieved by quantum LOPC protocols on n copies of sigma. We have first lemma. Uh, saying that device independent key of the of the device M raw is upper bounded by the following quantity, uh, where I have this decoration in front, in flim, lim soup, and the infimum over n sigma uh, uh, that means device M raw up to epsilon. So this is just consequence of a maximum inequality. Indeed, if you look into the definition of KDI IID. Um, you, you can commute the supremum of infimum by this maximum inequality, and then you can relax the um, uh, CLOPC operations to quantum LOPC operations, because as I told you before, uh, every CLOPC operation composed with measurement results in some quantum LOPC operation. So you, you end up in, in, a, in exactly infimum and this KN epsilon of sigma that you have in top on here on the upper part. So this is the lemma. Then we have observation that you can commute also that the maximum inequality can be uh, generalized to the limb soup inf inequality. So you can commute limb soup with infimum uh, like this. And then the proof goes so the, of the main theorem. So that the, the device independent key of M raw is upper bounded by this quantity from lemma. Then we use observation to switch limb soup with infimum. So we get limb, limb soup closer to the K because we are aiming to get this KDD of sigma. So you see, we have to get closer limb soup close to K and epsilon. And a few more steps. So repeat, repeat this. Let me repeat this. We, we switch limb soup with infimum from here to here, and infimum goes in front. Then we restrict infimum to only those devices that exactly mimics the, the, the working honest device MRO, which only restricts the infimum so we go up because the set over infimum is smaller. And, and then we get rid of in, epsilon here so we can commute infima and we have infimum over epsilon, the security parameter in front of uh, yeah, infimum over attacking devices. And this is nothing but the device dependent distillable key of state sigma. So we got this inequality that device independent key of M rho is upper bounded by the um, um, over N sigma uh, mimicking my state, my, my de device M rho. And actually this is the end of the proof. And, uh, and uh, on the, as a side comment, uh, we can define device independent entanglement measures. So as a corollary, we have uh, that um, device independent key of a state row, by which I mean that I take supremum over all measurements. So sorry. So in this in this left hand side, I take supreme over measurements, and then I obtain the, the device independent key of a row. Sorry for getting here a superscript. I just took it from paper. A laziness, so I changed a little bit notation. Um, so KDI of rho is upper bounded by the infimum over attacking devices of an upper bound U of state sigma, which is the attacking state. And where, where U is an upper bound of KDD. So this is a corollary. And uh, from this, that corollary, you can find that maybe it is useful also to define uh, the entanglement measure E, which is like with down arrow, which is supreme of, of a measurement uh, of a strategies, quantum strategies, um, of the infimum over attacking devices of the original entanglement measure of state sigma. So this is as if you think that you, you want to certify entanglement measure uh, in device independent way and, 
And this is the part of this measure, which is of course a little bit uh, not, not greater than E of a row, which you can do, which you can test device independently. Now I turn to examples. So uh, the, I base, we base on states that are known. Uh, they, are, they, are, they have form of two qubit tensor uh, d by d state. Uh, so states are very similar to those were in the paper by Pankowski et al. And uh, they were found by genetic algorithms by Łukasz Pankowski. Actually, exactly these states. Um, later, we modified them in original papers, so they were invisible until they were used in, uh, in, the, in the paper by Baum et al. So, so this is a small monster. So you have this matrix, which is parameterized by uh, um, the two qubit structure that you can see here. And, uh, and there are block matrices, d squared by d squared matrices, x and y. So y is the um, just maximally correlated state, one of a dii, so like a key. And um, X is the operator. If you look a little bit closer, then uh, this is like you take a swap gate, and in places where swap has non-zero element, you put elements of entire transformation, UIJ. So you see here this IJ, JI. So this is element of a swap gate. And then you, you spread over that structure, the unitary transformation that has, um, uh, uij equaled with modulus one over root d. So if you put in particular, if you change, uh, if you um, uh, if you choose uh, p to be this parameter, then you obtain that device dependent key is lower bounded as follows by one minus Shannon entropy of this distribution, while k of kdd of rho, this should be kdd, uh, kd sorry. Yeah, KDD of row partial transposed is upper bounded by one over root D plus one. So this is exponentially small in number of qubits that the state occupies, uh, which was the, the last line was checked here. And uh, so if you if you go to numbers, uh, then uh, rho um, with parameter D equal to two to the five satisfies already a gap. So the KDI is less than KDD. And if you make it like row two to 20, then you obtain the following gap. So the device dependent key of row mm, is lower bounded by uh, almost one and device independent key is upper bounded by something like close to zero, like 10 to minus three. Uh, so this is like a main example, the family of them. And the interpretation of that is that after 20 rounds, because I told you this is row 20, it looks like a really num huge number of qubits, 21 per side, but it is constructible from a four qubit state, row two, um, by Maurer's distillation protocol. So row 20, row, sorry, row two to 20 should be here, have all, after this Maurer distillation protocol becomes, uh, row two becomes row two to 20, and, and it has almost one bit of device dependent key and almost zero device independent key. So the protocol looks like this, you take two pairs of row two, you perform C naught between B and B part of one and B part of the other, a C naught of A, A part of one and A part of the other, then you measure in computational basis and compare the results. So when the results are the same exactly, zero, zero, or one, one, then you keep the state for the next round recursively, or, or you just throw away and start over. So if you repeat it, uh, so at least 20 times you have to repeat this procedure, but possibly many more times because this is probabilistic protocol. Um, uh, yeah, at worst it is uh, yeah, much more times you can repeat it. Anyway, you get after this distillation, this row to 20, which has exhibits the extremal gap between device independent key and device dependent one. And we also have a sufficient condition. So if your matrix looks like the, similarly to the stage that I shown you, so on diagonal it has separable, um, separable uh, uh, states. And uh, if you denote norm of C by, block C by gamma, then the following condition for uh, Shannon entropy of a distribution alpha, beta, and gamma. Uh, implies already the gap between KDI and KDD, it should be here. 
So device dependent key and device independent one. So uh, for this, uh, for lower bound, you prove uh, you apply the Vetak Minter protocol to a two qubit part, this two qubit structure of a state. And for upper bound, we use um, non lockability of relative entropy of entanglement. So we observe that um, because we want to upper bound key of row partial transposed, we observe that uh, this state after one bit defacing on, on its kind of key part, the key part in this business becomes separable. So it means that relative entropy must have, uh, is not lockable, so it must have been small because it, it went down uh, to zero. Uh, after defacing, and, and from that you get you get the bound, just roughly speaking. Okay, so this was the part about states, and uh, I see my time is running out. But uh, let me just say a few words about channels. Oh, These you are have twenty more minutes. So I have no twenty more minutes. Ah, because we started late. Okay, fine. Yes, yeah. So it is it's fine. Uh, uh, so so in the scenario for channels, um, you consider a similar issue but just explicitly consider the channel which is between the two pair between the pairs of devices of Alice and Bob let's call it lambda and let's call this whole setup an honest implementation setup so I have some input state that should be fed by honest provider um, then there is a lambda to which I, I enter this and then uh, there are measurements uh, that are not trusted, but they're, so so th these are this is the honest implementation. But of course, in the attack, uh, everything can change. So not only the measurements can change, not only the input state, but also the very channel can change from lambda to lambda prime. And the attack is successful, uh, ideally successful, if it is invisible to honest parties, namely when the statistics of inputs and outputs of this setup are exactly the same like in the honest implementation. So uh, explicitly, I call this tuple M rho lambda uh, uh, a setup, uh, which is like trace identity tensor lambda on, on rho, uh, acting on a, on a state rho, uh, trace with uh, measurements MXA, MYB, um, uh, which is equal to trace, if the attack is successful, it is equal to trace of Lambda prime acting on, on attacking state sigma and trace with um, measurements or attacking measurements. And the example of the attack is exactly like this by, by this partial transposition trick that I shown you before is that you take a channel which is a composition of uh, lambda and followed by transposition map and, uh, and you transpose the, uh, the measurements of Bob. And the state actually you keep the same. So this example of ideal attack. I'm sorry, can I uh, ask? So, uh, wait, it's a it is a proper transposition map. So it's uh, okay. I'm a bit con confused uh, whether okay. Maybe it's a so you, inter you you partially transpose this right. and that because there are two matrices. So this becomes partial right. transposition on on identity tensor lambda becomes identity tensor transposition composed right. with lambda. Right. Yeah, so I guess my question is that this transposition is per se not a, a kind of physical operation, but still it will be indistinguishable. Yes, uh, I, I, I should uh, emphasize here that, of course, such a lambda prime is physical only when the, the lambda itself is kind of PPT channel. And so, of course, it is uh, not like, like previously we needed uh, PPT states row, then here we need we will need a PPT channel. So such that when you compose with a non-physical operation, it's still a channel. So T oh, is not, thanks. not not physical per se. Thanks for the question. I, I forgot to mention that. Yes, yes. So this is important. Mm, right. So um, mm, and and actually now now I should turn to the this defining by analogy like in the beginning of the talk I told you about device dependent uh, key and device independent definition here I will be talking about private capacities of the channel so first this device dependent private I mean it's it's not called device dependent but I I emphasize this for um, to to kind of uh, be sure that we know what we are talking about that this is just usual private capacity of a quantum channel. Um, so this is decorated with index i, which means the i-way communication used by the parties to distill key. 
So this is again this decoration by Infimum and Lim Supremum, which is like always of the key rate, which is in case of channels we call like P epsilon I N, which is the rate of epsilon secret distillable key achieved via N uses of lambda and I wave communication. I don't write it explicitly because it would be really monster. But but roughly speaking, this is what we are talking about. And this I can be zero, one, or two way, of course. Yeah? communication so no communication one-way communication and two-way and then we consider a class of attacks on on uh, like the one I, I showed you before so there can be various classes of attacks uh, so we we focus on because we aim an upper bounds we focus on IIDs of channels so the channel is we have n users of the same channel and the device can if you press the button uh, then device holds the result in memory and can pass the results both classical and some quantum remaining state to the next round. So we, we, in general, we allow for such an attack that from each round of measurement, you, uh, the, the memory is passed. And also device can talk with J-way communication. So I, the index will be J here between rounds. So when Alice, and before Alice and Bob press the button, device can talk with some communication. And after they press the button, which is in a non-signaling way, device again can talk in, J communication. So then you obtain uh, a quantity which is decorated by like P, D, I, J, I. I stands for the operation of Alice and Bob and J for the Eve's operation, like a device operation, which is dishonest. So this quantity for a setup M rho lambda is uh, the, uh, the limit of, uh, of uh, again P decorated with even more indexes. <laughs> which is rate of epsilon, uh, epsilon secret DI key achieved via N uses of lambda and I way communication and measurements M, right? So, this is my figure of merit, and we want to bound this monster by something a little bit simpler. So, we will, in first step, we will uh, disallow this memory that is passing because this would uh, be non IID behavior. So uh, first some drawing, because I told you maybe it was not visible what I'm talking about. So uh, the timeline, time goes from left to right. And this is, I, I described now the class DI2 of attack. So this is two-way communication uh, in this, uh, let's show this. So between A and B, there are these double lines, which describe the two-way communication between devices. Then there, uh, there is a channel. After channel, then again, device can talk. And then there is a round of, first round of measurements by Alice and Bob. And so they get, they feed input X1 and Y1 and get output A1 and B1. Then again, there is a sandwich with uh, um, talking by device, channel, talking by device, next round and so on and so on until, until you need. Uh, and um, and these, these red parts are, are discussion of a device inside and the blue lines are the passage of memory from from one round to the other so to obtain di the class of attack di with less than two you should reduce double lines the red lines to zero uh, no line or one line which is zero or one way communication and i should also re recall that on top of this devices alice and bob are allowed to perform Close local operations, not close, but it's classical local operations and public communications on this on these outputs that are here, 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 and there. Okay, and now we, uh, like I told you before, we uh, reduce this um, class of attacks a little bit by uh, saying that there is no this we we don't want these blue lines, so we uh, we uh, disallow passage of memory between uh, rounds. So this is cl uh, class IDIJ, and and you have a plethora of the of the private capacities that you can uh, um, obtain uh, from that definition. Namely, there are these two indices: the uh, lower subindex and upper subindex. I recall that lower subindex is uh, uh, in hands of Alice, kind of, which is the power of communication of Alice and Bob, and the upper subindex is the uh, power of Eve. So if you decrease power of if you go up, you, you get increasing, increasing private capacities. And if you go from left to right, the index upper, uh, then the 
uh, the lower subindex changes from zero to one to finally two. And then you increase the power of Alice and Bob. And uh, we will upper bound it so that the largest quantity is P2 down arrow zero. So this is just to say that uh, maybe it's not that uh, scary, but there are many, many of these definitions that you can have. But just I want to tell you about the main result, which is that the supremum of the private device independent private capacity, which is on left hand side, is upper bounded by the uh, or supremum I take, sorry, uh, supremum I take over M and row measurements and states now, not only on measurements, but also on states. Mm, so this is upper bounded again, the same supremum, but infimum over attacks via setups that are from this IDIJ class that exactly mimics our honest implementation setup. From this infimum is taken from the private capacity, ordinary normal private capacity uh, of lambda prime, where uh, max of ij communication is allowed. So depending on what is the index i and j, then this is 0, 1, or 2 here. And important corollary is that when you, uh, 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 when you uh, uh, simply have this partial transposition chip that I've told you before, then the device independent capacity of a channel lambda, which, is, which must be, uh, like I said, PVP channel, uh, is upper bounded by the private capacity of a composition of, a, of this channel with transposition map, which is in turn upper bounded by, here is max ij, I can upper bound it safely by two, which is enough for our purpose of illustration because uh, it's known already, and I quote here the result from a paper by Miller, Hermes, and Kristandl, that uh, the channel, so I told you before in the first part of the talk about the states rho d, uh, found by uh, Łukasz Pankowski. So if you take a channel choice state of which is Rodi, then uh, call it lambda one, then you have the following upper bound. So if you compose lambda one with T with, with transposition map, then the upper bound is as follows. With, is also dependent on D, this family of channels. So the, the private capacity, uh, two-way private capacity goes to zero. While, while the um, ordinary normal private capacity of the channel lambda one is going to one with dimension D. So again, you have a gap between uh, 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 private device independent capacity and uh, or usual private capacity of a channel. So, okay, maybe I know if I have a time for the proof. Um, but the proof is very similar to the, the one for state. So you have these little, little monsters here, but roughly speaking, the DI, DI credit capacity is upper bounded by this IDI, of course, because if cannot use the memory passage from round to round. And, and we, in the first step, which is defined like as follows, and in the first step, you do the min, max min inequality. So you switch the supreme with infimum. And then you want to relax CLOPC protocol with index I uh, to the quantum LOPC protocols, but you have to be careful which, which, which type of operation uh, is used by devices. So it only makes sense to take quantum LOPC with maximum of these two indices because you kind of compose two different LOPC operations. One, is, one can be two-way, the other can be one-way. In turn, you get a QLOPC two-way. Another example, if you have one communication is zero way, the other is one way, then you have to take max of these, which is quantum LOPC operation with one way communication. And then you obtain uh, ordinary capacity of, uh, I mean, it's not yet capacity, but it's like key rate achieved by an, an usage of channel lambda prime, the attacking channel, uh, again with this max ij, which you can safely upper bound max ij by two. And this is kind of the idea of the middle part of the proof. The rest is very similar to the key, uh, key part, the, the part of the about key that I told you before. And uh, yeah, and I would just finishing. I want to tell you that there is an interesting correspondence between uh, this set, this scenario with apparently different one, namely the one with quantum key repeaters. So just a few words about this scenario of quantum key repeaters. So you have uh, n copies of a state rho AC1 shared by Alice and Shirley, and n copies of a state C2B, which, uh, 
chaired by Charlie and Bob. And the parties performed the LOCC operations, local operations and classical communication on, on between three parties. And they want to obtain key between Alice and Bob, as much key as they can. And this is called repeatable key. So it is proven that actually this repeatable key of these two states is actually equal to the, for, for PPT states, of course, it's equal to repeated repeater key for partial transpose states, which is upper bounded by KDD of raw partial transpose. And if you compare this with our bound that we obtained, that KDI of rho is upper bounded, this, this is the same upper bound. And the, it's even more funny when I was preparing for the talk, uh, this exactly this slide, I was asking myself, oh, so since I believe in the connection, maybe I will prove something uh, similar for KDI. And I was able to, to prove actually yesterday that KDI of rho uh, IID is equal to KDI of rho partial transpose IID. So there is a full correspondence between these two uh, uh, setups and possibly this can lead to tighter bounds on the IP key because uh, uh, these key repeaters are already uh, well studied. So maybe one can borrow some results from them there. So I pass to conclusions. Um, so we have provided upper bounds for um, actually not on the IID, but device independent key. Uh, the bounds are independent of, from measurements that can be involved in protocols. Uh, so this is the first example of that strong bound. We have also analogous results for channels. And I also recommend, apart from the three papers that I showed you before, I recommend the uh, recent paper by Mate and co-authors, uh, uh, which is, uh, which is giving some strong bounds in, uh, in a, a kind of uh, uh, low dimensional cases. And uh, regarding upper problems, uh, our proofs were kind of almost void of uh, whether this is key or not as a resource. So uh, I hope that I have, and I kind of start trying um, to, is to um, generalize the proof for case of private randomness. Uh, it would be also good because I gave you a high dimensional examples to have a small dimensional examples and and we are working on that uh, with any car and see that does mm, and uh, it will be it's a general question whether there are PPT states violating bell inequality that have positive uh, uh, DI key or uh, even DD key I mean device dependent key and with that I would like to thank you for your attention um, many thanks, Kyle, for Thank a uh, nice uh, and interesting talk. We have uh, time for questions, comments to the speaker. I have a question. Yes. Uh, thank, thanks, Carol, for a nice talk. Um, I was wondering if going back to kind of the state bounds, so you have this kind of chain of bounds from the DI to the device dependent and then to well, some measures of entanglement. Do you have any? This trivial inequalities, you mean? I'm, I'm sorry, I have a lot of this animation, so <laughs> we'll take, or maybe I'll just keep it and I will just try to find it uh, like that. You mean this? Yes, basically. And then the device dependent, you can bound sometimes with some entanglement measure, right? Like a squashed entanglement or what? Yeah, so. Uh, um, I, you mean that the, ah, the, the chain, sorry, the main result, okay, again, maybe this you mean? Yes, yes, yes this. do you know, like, in, in which cases do, are the inequalities tight? Do you have some idea when these can be tight? Uh, these inequalities, a good question. Mm. Uh, I have to say I don't know. Um, uh, let me, let me think, no, I think, uh, yeah, we didn't study it uh, kind of how, how well they performed. They're just, they just working well enough. And I guess this is a good question, how, how tight they can be. I wonder, so one would need to, uh, place some lower bounds and compare and, um, um yeah, and then. Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's doable. So just take uh, the Vitak Winter uh, protocol, uh, or like this. Um, actually, I would say better uh, this entropy accumulation approach, mm -hmm. uh, and then and then compare. We we didn't try. 
but but actually to start with this you need to have belly you need to have a good belly inequality to to hope that you have some key so i would say that the examples that i gave are rather hopeless so in some paper i show that actually they almost they hardly violate CHSH inequality for example so um, so it's really hard to believe that uh, so one can even say that perhaps the device independent key is zero. So there is actually a conjecture, maybe I should stress it. There is a conjecture by uh, Felix uh, uh, Lediski and Rolte Marlon Friedman that PPT states have zero this device independent key. Yes. <laughs> so they can be not fully tied, yeah. <laughs> of yeah, course, because they are more than zero, yes. Yeah, I mean, that's why I asked, but I guess like their example, the conjecture is based on one example of the yeah one example and on different state which is pt pt invariant so so it's hard to say but yeah but like these bounds will never give you a, a zero of a bound right because it's uh, yeah sure sure measures. sure because they're entanglement measures yes they are faithful okay thanks thank you um, other questions to carol Okay, uh, I have one like a general question. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm a bit ignorant in, in the, the field of uh, quantum key distribution. But okay, what? Uh, okay, what? It seems to me that the, the, the field is built uh, like sort of parties using those games. They they have like unlimited computational resources. Like when you were talking about the syllable key, uh, this map. Uh, Delta, I believe, uh, yes. in our first slide, it, th there was nothing known about the complexity, I mean, the number of gates needed, right? Ah, interesting. Also, yeah. uh, also, I, I, also, I guess if attacks are in the theory sort of unlimited, right? Yeah, if it's truly unlimited, yes. The, 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 regarding Alice and Bob, uh, I guess there are in some cases like protocols are kind of simple in the sense that you there are these prepare and measure protocols that you can just you don't use directly gates but you you just, so just pre yeah my, my question is was there something done on the side like if uh, if you put if you start putting computational limitations on, on parties like uh, yeah you know, they they cannot implement arbitrary crazy gates or Something yes, like so that. so there was this model which is called bounded bounds bounded storage model. So which is going in this direction that if uh, does not contain have quantum memory, yeah, because to to do collective measurements on 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 many because it's a gazillion of qubits she would have yeah, uh, okay. in the collective attacks because she collects all the all the bits from Alice, qubits from Alice and Bob somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, then she would need to have a gigantic measurement and, and maybe she needs time to have to store actually during protocol these qubits. So if you don't have this, then if is forced to measure in some time, so she has to decide. And because she has to decide, she has limited option because she has to, she has to collapse this to classical distribution. And then you have a different uh, uh, results for the larger key rates, uh, for example. So th this is the one that I know uh, regarding the computation itself. So this this was about memory. Regarding computation itself, I don't I haven't heard about such result. Maybe there is, but I, I haven't. Maybe I can I can follow all the papers that are now. But I would say there is no uh, no consideration. So I, for Alice and Bob, uh, usually these protocols are feasible and. Uh, but of course, if you ask, oh, I have this distillable key overall, is it achievable some by simple operation of Alice and Bob, like simple gates? Um, then the answer may be perhaps not. Perhaps indeed you have also to have a large uh, me measurements. However, the examples that we know for lower bounds are very easy just to perform classical, classical uh, processing. So this is regarding Alice and, and Bob, but it's a, in general a good question. Yeah? So consider Eve that, she, for example, she's restricted to certain set of gates and maybe then security is uh, easier to achieve. Right. I guess the question was one the, for the honest part is if you want to do QKV and you want to perform the lamb, this lambda by Alice and Bob, right? 
whether so this usually this lambda is like i said so in general it can be if you consider arbitrary state and and it kd of that kdd then um, then the answer is yeah perhaps some to to achieve the kdd maybe you need a really uh, uh, difficult operations difficult like composed of a lot of gates so this is uh, i think it hasn't been studied but regarding lower bounds that are kind of which we feel lead which are kind of enough for practical reasons then then you then they are kind of easy to do they're just classical operations yeah so, I think often i think the, the coherent operations are kind of linked to entanglement distillation so maybe if something is known about the complexity of that then this is maybe a good sort of baseline um, yes um, so regarding gates um I guess there can be some, yeah, regarding this other entanglement, there can be some study on the topic, but uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I cannot point the, the exactly paper on that. But it's a good question, yeah, whether, it, whether it's feasible with some reasonable set of operations. Yeah. Right. I mean, the, the question, of course, whether it's in the end uh, practical, because yeah, for practical. example, that, that you, I mean, this result that you mentioned is already sort of convincing uh, that it would play, I mean, uh, if, added, uh, if, if uh, you know, it's limited, has limited memory, but, right. Yeah. All right, any, any further questions to, to Kyle? Last chance. Okay, uh, if not, let us uh, thank Carol again for a very interesting talk.